The National Legends Cars Championship is brought to you in association with All Growth Limited. Hello and welcome to Brands Hatch and welcome to the 2023 Legends Cars Championship. We're back once again with changeable conditions amongst us. We have three great races coming up and of course the random grid draw at the start of the weekend. We then have reverse grids on top of that. The drivers are all prepped and ready. It should be a wonderful day's racing. Thanks Chaz, we're looking forward to it. So too is Marcus Pett, the championship leader. 25 points clear of Will Gibson. Chris Needham third from Andy Bird. Luke Simmons fifth and Oli Schlup wrapping up the top six as we head into day two. So Jack Parker, driver of the number four machine, welcome to Brands Hatch for this race event. Last time that you were out here, you were obviously part of the Elite Cup with the Legends as part of the Toka package this year. You had a fantastic time there. Have you been enjoying yourself in the car? Yeah, it's great to jump in the, the quick steel car. A fantastic uh, meeting at um, uh, the Toka event. We had a great weekend. We. Um, we couldn't ask for a better one, we lead in the championship, so it's great to think that we can continue holding that lead into Croft and, and potentially into Knock Hill. And what's your confidence like then coming into the weekend, knowing that you've got those results there? You're against a slightly different field, some different drivers in the national championship. Do you think you can still match up against these guys? We'll give it a good go. Um, there's still fast ones out there and all I can do is just try and work with the fast ones out there, try and get up to the podium and yeah, just, just enjoy myself is the main thing. It's, um, it's a little bit more relaxed uh, at the national meeting than it is at Toka. So it's more to get the sponsorship name out there and uh, have, uh, have good fun while doing it. And obviously, personally for you as a driver, stepping in for the amazing John Mickle, the big name in the championship, what does it mean for you? Because obviously you've worked with John for a very long time, so continuing that relationship and putting in good performances in the car, it must mean quite a bit. Yeah, it's great to um, jump in John's car. It's to have the feel of the whole team behind you and to have the uh, pace of the car. Yeah, I, I couldn't ask uh, for much better really off John and uh, Mickle Motorsport with all the Daves here. It's great uh, to have the teamwork behind um, and with John's support behind me, yeah, it's fantastic to, uh, to be under this, uh, this under this meeting, under this team. And we're in the paddock now with Charlie Budd, driver of the number 44 machine. Charlie, the last couple of races that you've had here at Brandsatch have been uh, a bit challenging in ways, mixed results. How's your weekend going, would you say, so far? Yeah, it's been mixed weather as well, you know, which always makes it interesting in these. Um, yeah, it's been good. It's up and down. Uh, we had a first DNF yesterday in the final, which is not good in these. You know, we really need to uh, get the points over the year to uh, have a good finish. But it is what it is. The lads worked really hard last night and got the engine in, so we're good to go today. And what's it like having having a team around you that will support like that? Because obviously you've got Andy in the number 113 in the same awning, but he's always been good on the spanners as well from previous experience I've got with him. So it, it must help quite a lot. Exactly that. Without them, I wouldn't be racing. So uh, yeah, really grateful for all the help. And Andy, you know, is, is great as well. We're getting uh, involved. So it's, yeah, we definitely need them. And what are your thoughts on conditions ahead of today's racing then? Are you, are you one of these drivers that's praying for rain or do you want it to stay dry? You know, I used to be obsessed with looking at the weather forecast, but now I just kind of wait until we get out there. But the, um, I, these are good in the wet or the dry. Well, when I say they're good in the wet, they're not. They're terrible, but it's the same for everyone. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to whatever comes to us. So pole position drawn by Mike Schlup for race one of the weekend. Mark Beattie alongside Nick Bridgman and James Newbury on row two. Andrew Rogerson, one of our rookies, is on row three with Matt Knight. The guys at the back with the work to do. They'll be off the front in race two, of course. Jack Parker and Connor Mills. Here's the view from Nick Bridgman from row two. Mike Schlup immediately in front of the JLM car and the Park Lane cars machine of Mark Beattie, missing Kieran this weekend, which is a little bit of a shame. He'll be back for Elite Cup duties, I'm sure, at Croft. 
good skies here at the moment. Huge crowd, as ever, for the American Speed Fest. And our first all-growth race is about to get underway here at Brantach. Mike Schlupp leading them down well. Now pulling out at the back, that is Chris Needham, I think, who falls out of the way. Maybe Chris has got a problem. Mike Schlupp hasn't. He goes through into the lead. And it's Nick Bridgman in second in blue. On the outside is Mark Beattie trying to hold on in the part lane cars machine. Bridgman up into second. Will he just tag the back of the number three car? No, he doesn't. Under the Burton Bridge. Into Dridge for the first time. Beattie around the outside. Matt Knight fourth. And it's Luke Simmons in 25. Look at that, three wide as they come out of Druids, and there's room for more to be perfectly honest. Great driving standards shown here, and it's Mark Beatty that goes through in the lead now. Beatty, I was worried, was going to be down to third, but he's up into lead position as they go along Cooper Straight. Bridgman is third now, looking at Mike Schlup into Surtees. They go the left hander, then it's into McLaren. They'll grab just a little bit of apex there. Eduardo Gago going a little bit wide in the 97 car he's got Ollie Schlupp in orange and blue to his outside James Newbury who also started up towards the front of the grid uh, about to be passed is Connor Mills chasing Eduardo with that was Dan Pooley a uh, big fan Andy Bird on the outside as they go into Paddock Hill Ben once again there is oh and Andy Bird tagged by James Newbury Andy Bird was making progress and they're both off in the gravel. Game over, surely, for both of them. Certainly going to be no decent points available for either of those as Will Gibson starts to work his way through the field. Will with a 13th draw on the grid. So he's making his way through. Mark Beattie, the leader from Mike Schlup. Now Luke Simmons is third ahead of Nick Bridgman. Bridgman in the all-growth blue car. And here's Dan Pooley. Pooley learning from Will Gibson. He's got quite a few seasons under his belt. Dan Pooley, like many of the other rookies, just learning round by round and getting quicker and quicker as Connor Mills goes up the inside of him. Connor in the blue number 19, team hard car. The blue and orange of Ollie Schlup behind him. I think it's Marcus Pett. So here's Connor Mills. Dan Pooley to the side. Is there a little bit of side-to-side -side contact there? Let's take a look at things from Dan's perspective as Connor Mills goes through. So out front, Mike Schlup the leader as they go into Paddock Hill Bend three wide there this is super stuff and lots of I tell you what there's, there's no big sort outs going here you could sometimes expect a race to get to single file relatively quickly this is not the case here the grid is the grid draw has worked very well for us and Mike Schlup the leader with Mark Beattie second but for how long Beattie goes down the inside nice clean move they're both giving each other room and Beatimon goes up into lead position Luke Simmons is now challenging for second Simmons goes down the inside looks to go past the JLM car and Simmons is through Luke Simmons up into second place now will ch chase Mark Beatty. got some quick guys coming through the field as well though here is Nick Price another of the newcomers this year running with Dan Pooley ran with Dan's team on the short ovals and Chris Needham is behind them Chris third in the championship this is going to knock his points as Mark Beatty looks down on the inside run it's Luke Simmons to the outside challenging for the lead and Beattie runs wide, Simmons will find the way through on the inside with a slightly tighter line, good momentum, up into the lead, Luke Simmons! Both of those guys and Mike Schlurp looking for their first career win, that would be certainly something to savour. Down from Druids they go, into Graham Hill Bend, on Cooper Strait once again, inside line there for Jack Parker, side by side with Connor Mills, Jack in the green, blue, red, yellow, silver, quick steel car taking over as you heard from John Mickle. So a team car, we will see John in the car, I think, later on in the season, which will be good to see John back in. Here's Rob Fountain, former champion in 31, now fending off the advances of Connor Mills. Here's the view from Marcus Pett, looking ahead to Dan Pooley in 32, looking back at Oli Schlup. Oli will realise that the championship leader, Marcus Pett, I think my maths was a bit awry at the end of the last programme, certainly close between Marcus Pett and Will Gibson, 25 points in it to Pett's advantage. So Marcus Pett leading the championship and off goes a little platter and into the gravel goes Rob Fountain, but he recovers very well indeed, holds his nerve, comes through the gravel, rejoins the track. Marcus Pett to the outside as they round Druids, outside of Dan Pooley. Meanwhile, the battle for the lead continues. In front is Mark Beattie having a very good run indeed. Nick Bridgman still up there at the sharp end. Connor Mills coming through. Andrew Rogerson in the mix as well in the white car. Jack Parker picking another one off. Luke Simmons has a look there on the inside as they go into Surtees, but into McLaren, he's on the outside run, so he's going to have to try and get the run out of the Clark curve onto the Brabham straight, the main straight here at Brands Hatch, and see if he can get into the race lead. Connor Mills being chased 
by Jack Parker. Here's the scrap for the lead. Simmons on the inside, did get that momentum, gets the run. He's got the right line as Will Gibson pops out from fourth, looks for third place on Mike Schlupp, which he does. So Gibson coming through. Started 13th on the grid. Oh, we've got an incident there. That's Dan Pooley and Tyler Reed. Here's Dan Pooley. Tyler goes up the inside. They're both going for the same bit of tarmac. Was that a lunge? Well, we'll leave that to the clerk of the course to decide, but not good for either driver. There is Jack Parker now up ahead of Nick Bridgman. Parker will be on the front row for race two, so he's come right the way through from the back of the pack. Matt Knight now chasing Connor Mills. Connor with a quicker line into Surtees. There is car number 20. That is Ben Higgins, last year's rookie champion, again, like Luke Simmons. And Tyler Reid's still in the gravel. Now, there will be yellow flags there. That surely has got to be a safety car. On board with Marcus Pett, having a look at Connor Mills, goes to the outside, Matt Knight immediately in front of us. They're going to be coming into a yellow flag zone, so they need to sort themselves out. I'm sure they will. They'll be getting instruction from the clerk of the course. Let's just watch. Now, look at that all-line astern. That's really good stuff from the cars not all of those will have, will have known that Tyler Reed was stuck there in the gravel why haven't they put the safety car out yet I don't know clearly Tyler I don't think he's going anywhere from there as Will Gibson looks for second position at Graham Hill Bend Ben Higgins having a good run as well he's up with Mike Schlup Jack Parker behind then it's Nick Bridgman in the all-growth car running well and Connor Mills with Marcus Pett to his inside so they can race on this part of the track but remember they won't be able to overtake where Tyler Reed's car is. Tyler becomes the second retirement of the race. We lost Andy Bird earlier on, which was a, a big pity as well. Andy running fourth in the championship coming into this race. I think things are going to change at the top end. Now, OK, so Tyler is out of the car. The marshal's still... Why wasn't there a safety car when Tyler was in the car? It's a short lap, and I think the officials try and keep the racing going as long as possible to be, to be their defender, as it were. I think now we've got to have a safety car because... Although the drivers know it's there, so there could be the temptation to let the race go on. Now we've got yellows up at Druids, which indicates we're probably on full course caution here at Brands Hatch. So full course caution and... Oh dear, OK, Matt Knight spins around. We'll have more for you after the break. Safety car coming into pit lane and we've got a one lap dash on our hands to get to the chequered flag. It's Luke Simmons from Mark Beatty, then Will Gibson in third place. Fourth is Mike Schlup, but he's been challenged by Jack Parker. Mark Beatty has a look at the inside of Paddock. There's no room at the in for him there. Will Gibson in the electric centre Bracknell car having a good look. He's going to go to the inside. Beatty's got it covered. Will's forced to the outside in black and orange. He's going to challenge for second place, but it's Luke Simmons out front. We've got a, a two in five chance, uh, sorry, a three in five chance of a first time winner from this quintet. Jack Parker now looking for third, that could discount Beatty from the equation, so now it's down to Luke Simmons to maybe get a first win, he goes along Cooper straight can he hold his nerve from Will Gibson who's got vastly more experience, look how he's controlling the car, Simmons out front great stuff from the first for Vans PR Jones back machine here he goes around Clark Curve, this could be about the run to the flag, we've seen many a car come off of Clark Curve and go for the burn up round the outside and pass on the line but I don't think Gibson's got enough in the tank to do that and it's going to be Luke Simmons who takes a maiden winning Legends car, it's been a history made there Will Gibson's second third position goes to Jack Parker from Mark Beatty and Ben Higgins Simmons from 7th on the grid, Gibson from 13th, Jack Parker from 24th Ben Higgins from 15th Marcus Pett is sixth, he came 14th on the grid, then it was Connor Mills in seventh from Oli Schlup, but let's take nothing away from the Mower Mate, principal sponsor of course, car of Luke Simmons, who takes his first Legends Cars race win, superb stuff. Simmons, Gibson and Parker, Parker fastest lap, Beatty in fourth from Higgins, Marcus Pett, Connor Mills, Oli Schlup, Nick Bridgman and Nathan Anthony in 10th place, 11th went to Andrew Rogerson from Charlie Budd and Rob Fountain, Simon Griffiths, the newcomer doing well. He's in 14th from Chris Needham and Dan Pooley. Eduardo Gago next up from Paul Mazel. Nick Price in 19th. Lenny Woodcock in 20th ahead of Matt Knight and James Newbury. Non-finishes Tyler Reid and Andy Bird. So, Luke Simmons, we've seen you on the podium a couple of times already here at Brands Hatch in different positions, but this time top step of the podium. You must be very pleased with how that race went for you. Loads going on at the front of the field. Yeah, we had a really good battle, good race. Um, great to get the first win for the team. Massive thanks to all the guys that have helped us this week and again. 
uh, yeah, we've got a really fast car this weekend. Rain coming once again, potentially. I keep forgetting who wants rain and who doesn't these days because there's a big mix in the paddock. Are you one of these guys that really wants slippy conditions or do you not prefer them as much? Oh yeah, I don't mind them. We had a, as I say, we had a good race um, last year, at the end of last year in the wet. So we'll see how it goes this year. So we're here with second place finisher, Will Gibson. Will, another very busy race to start the day here at Brands Hatch. Again, a lot of bumping and barging, but it's all part of the fun, isn't it? Yeah, typical Legends race. Um, yeah, it's absolutely chaos to be fair. First race on a Sunday is always a little bit intense. Lots of crashes, lots of spins, lots of yellow flags. But yeah, it's really good. Came from 13th to second. So yeah, really happy. And the last three races, obviously not going so brilliantly in the event before that. So it's nice, I imagine, to sort of turn around with your, your sort of first race of today and get rid of the, uh, the superstitions we were mentioning a moment ago. Yeah, I mean, we're probably the most superstitious team uh, in Legends by a long way to be fair and yeah yesterday was just awful it didn't start particularly well getting caught out in the rain um getting taken out in the final but swap cars this car's good yeah we're we're happy it's uh, the joys of having two cars so third place finisher jack parker jack another podium to add to your event here at american speed fest you must be really pleased to continually get these big points finishes yeah it was a hard race we started 24th on the grid um to work way through the pack and get a podium get third yeah i'm over the moon with that um it was hard getting through the pack there's so many fast drivers out there but we managed to work with a couple of them and got through the pack and got on the podium. Now with these, obviously the second day of each racing weekend that we have in the championship, we have the random reverse grid draws. So you'll start at the back for one race and at the front for the other. Is there any real advantage with knowing how quickly you can come through the field like that? Because it's very impressive. It's, uh, it's impressive for the uh, last race. If you're doing well, you go to the back of the grid on the final. Um, so to have the confidence that knowing that you can come through the grid um, on the final, yeah, it's great. Uh, for the second race, I'll be starting on pole, so uh, I'm hoping I can stay on the uh, podium for that. Nick, welcome to Brands Hatch for this weekend. How do you feel your championship's going so far and what are your thoughts going into this weekend? Um, yeah, no, no, uh, obviously I really look forward to the speed fest, but um, we've been struggling a little bit this year, unfortunately, but we've got um, a new car. We're just trying to get to grips with. Um, hopefully we're going to get it sorted out in this, this meeting. And what does it mean to race at a meeting like this at American Speed Fest for you drivers? Because it's a fantastic event, loads of fans. It must be quite a positive environment to be in, for sure. It's personally my favourite meeting. I think it brings out the crowds, best in everyone, and it's really good racing usually, and usually good weather. I uh, don't know about this weekend, though. <laughs> well, that's it, yeah. We've got the sun at the moment, but more rain promised later on. Now, all over the car, we see the All Growth Limited branding, the sponsor of the championship, but also covering your car primarily this season. What does it mean to you personally and as a team to have that partnership with said sponsor? Yeah, fantastic. Uh, Peter's a great guy, the company's a great company, um, it means everything to have a sponsors, um, I think it's important for all the drivers and it's great that they've come on board and sponsored the championship. And earlier, uh, one of the earlier races at least, you started third on the grid because of the random grid draw which really spices things up. What sort of confidence do you carry into those races as a driver when you get put near the front of the field when sometimes in qualifying you might not be as high up for example? No, I usually like it, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, you know, no, we had a good start, as I said, we're getting some prob uh, problems solved out with the car, but usually a, a, a where I prefer to pull pole or at the back, you know, so because of the grid traverse, yeah. um, you get a fair chance and it's good racing. Remember we said Jack Parker was off the back in race one, he therefore is on pole for race two with Connor Mills alongside, we're on board with him. Row two, Nathan Anthony and Tyler Reid, then Andy Bird and Paul Mazel in the Gigabox car, Paul's on the inside of row three. Some quality drivers towards the front, maybe the, the draw perhaps favours the championship 
contenders a little bit more for race two towards the front and you'd be brave to bet against Jack Parker or Connor Mills winning this one Andy Bird will, will be in with a shout as well he goes up into fifth place off the start but it's Jack Parker there at the moment Connor Mills switches over to the inside in the number 19 car and he's got the inside looks a little bit damp out there doesn't it certainly I think more so from the on onboard cameras than it does from the outfield cameras just now as Parker challenges for the race lead goes down the inside grabs a bit of curb that loses the quick steel car a wee bit of momentum and he drops back so Connor Mills in the team hard car leading this one as they go into Surtees now Jack Parker second Tyler Reed is third Nathan Anthony in the 29 Savant is next up from Ben Higgins Marcus Pett makes a move on the Gigabox 28 of Paul Vassell Paul running wide that's going to allow Charlie Bird through on the uh, Charlie Bud through on the inside so Charlie looking to add to his point tally as well as the race leaders are side by side across the line and this time Jack Parker goes through on the inside got a good run out of Clark Curve here's Will Gibson Will incidentally back into the championship lead now by 20 points from Marcus Pett after race number one Chris Needham and Luke Simmons joint third Ollie Schlupp and Andy Bird joint fifth in the standings if you keep track of those as Connor Mills challenges to try and get the lead back. Tyler Reed, are we going to see a rookie winning this one maybe? Because the top two, if they occupy each other enough, might slow each other up and allow Tyler to come up. Nathan Anthony is not that far away as well. Here's the view from Connor and the battle for the lead. He's all over the back of Jack Parker. Both of those guys evenly matched. Bags of experience from the pair of them. Lots going on down the order. Mike Schlipp has to go a wee bit on the grass, maybe in avoidance. Andrew Rogerson to the outside. Um, to the outside there, the blue number eight, Simon Griffiths, our newcomer, ex Catrium graduate driver and uh, in indeed competitor in many spheres of motorsport. Great to have him on board as Marcus Peck looks down the inside of Andy Bird to try and make the place. Marcus, yesterday's round winner and uh, briefly championship leader, and he's got Andy Bird now firmly behind him. Ollie Schlupp goes through shot, then Rob Fountain with Matt Knight chasing him, Paul Marcel. Nick Bridgman next up, then Mike Schlupp side by side with Nick Price in the 34. So the sort out gradually happening over the course of this 10 lap race on the Indy circuit here at Brands Hatch. There is Simon Griffiths with Eduardo Gago Munoz just right behind him. Lenny Woodcock elected to start off the back for day two in the, in the gentleman's group as it's termed. That was, uh, I think, uh, a phrase coined by Phil Cooper who runs Legends and the likes of Gerard McCosh the late great Gerard McCosh ran in that group over the years starting off the back and just enjoying their racing as the race leaders go around Paddock Hill Bend again it's Jack Parker still out front Connor Mills chasing hard and those guys have got a wee bit of a gap at the moment over Tyler Reed. Nathan Anthony receives the attention on the inside of Will Gibson. Gibson slots through and Ben Higgins reads that well. Ben Higgins is going to try and follow him through. But Ben's on the outside run. He's got Chris Needham and Marcus Pett behind him. Now Ben Higgins here potentially could get hung out to dry if he's not careful. We'll see how this pans out. So long Cooper straight. No, Ben's all right actually. Had enough of a lead on that particular battle. Nathan Anthony gets very tail happy. And that will lose him momentum and Ben Higgins manages to pop through, make up a place. On board with Charlie Budd, that's Dan Pooley that he's dicing with, goes through on the inside. Here's the view from the outside of the circuit and Dan Pooley, oh we can see why, nice little bump drafting there by Ollie Schlupp in the K-Seal number 9 car going through. As Tyler Reed grabs the curbs, that unsettles the car, look how Will Gibson makes the most of that. Will away from the kerbs and will take third position here, Will Gibson. So, Will scoring well, and it is about scoring well, not just about winning races. Score well in race number one, as we said, back into the championship lead. There is Luke Simmons. He'll be delighted to be joint third in the championship. Manages to pass Dan Pooley. Dan getting, uh, having to go a little bit wide there. It won't get track limits penalty for that if there's another car involved. Here's Connor Mills, though. He won't want to see that quick steel also a van racking logos for too much longer. He'll want to get past and he's working hard to try and do that. The question is with legends, often it's about timing and maybe doing it on the last lap as they cross the line here. But Parker and Mills working well together and away from Will Gibson at the moment. Tyler Reed holding on well too. Well not holding on, racing well. And he's in fourth place. Nathan Anthony in fifth. Marcus Pett sixth from Chris Needham. Andy Bird, the two ex-supercarters. Not quite racing together, but vying 
for that uh, very valued championship place. Here we come down Graham Hill once again. Schlup on the inside of Dan Pooley's racing. Continues here at Brad's Hatch. Off goes the 25 car. Just before the break, we saw Luke Simmons take a wide moment. He's recovered from that. And Connor Mills, meanwhile, is going for the lead side by side as they go across the line. Mills going high and wide into Paddock Hill. Ben, what a move around the outside by Connor Mills. And Jack Parker will try and fight back on the inside. But he's got his mirrors full here of Will Gibson. Gibson again going to the outside. He's not afraid to do that. Gibson gets his nose into second place. But he's got to hold on. He's got to find the grip on the outside here at Druids to hold on for the inside run down towards Graham Hill. Ben, I think he's going to pass Parker here. Or is he? Jack will try and hold it out on the outside. Jack realises that's gone. He might switch over and try and get momentum to lunge up the... Well, he won't lunge sorry pass on the inside as Connor Mills now leads so we've got two black cars first and second the multicoloured machine in third place Tyler Reed still there in fourth Connor Mills the race leader though Jack Parker's got all of that work to do once again and he could well be able to do it we've seen it in Legends cars many times before as the TWG automotive car goes to the outside this is the sort of move we might have expected from Gibson in race number one had he been close enough to Luke Simmons who took the win and Gibson goes into the lead Jack Parker's coming up and challenging for second place is Gibson going to go into race three with a win and a second he's looking good so far Parker back up into second place now ahead of Connor Mills and has Connor timed this wrong he's got on the outside here has he got the grip no he hasn't slots back in behind Jack Parker, Parker now all over the back of Gibson and he's going for it, Parker pops the quick steel car down the inside, can't quite do it, Gibson runs wide, maybe to avoid a bit of contact, maybe one eye on the mirror, but Parker's got the inside run into Surtees, grab second position, puff of smoke out of the back of the number four car, Connor Mills is coming up, and so too is Tyler Reed. Tyler Reed's looking for a podium in the number six, he's going to go on the inside here of Connor Mills, it's going to be a run to the flag for all four of them, but Jack Parker's got the verdict at the moment from Will Gibson, Reed up into third place ahead of Connor Mills, it's going to be a rookie podium, but it's Jack Parker that takes the win, Will Gibson second, Tyler Reed. Sensational third position, getting the better of Connor Mills on the last lap. Marcus Pett in fifth position and Chris Needham in sixth place. Needham will re-establish himself uh, on his own in third place ahead of Luke Simmons. What a race that was. Two superb races to kick off our programme. And we look forward to race three. Jack Parker from pole. Yeah, I mean, that's that's an easy call to make, isn't it? Parker from pole, Will Gibson from 10th place on the grid, then Tyler Reid, Connor Mills from 2nd on the grid, Marcus Pett from 11th, Chris Needham started 7th, then it was Nathan Anthony, Ben Higgins, Andy Bird in 9th place, and Ollie Schlup completing our top 10. 11th went to Charlie Budd from Luke Simmons and Dan Pooley. Rob Fountain and Mike Schlup next up from Andrew Rogerson and Mark Beattie. Nick Bridgman in 18th ahead of Simon Griffiths and Paul Mazel. And then 21st, Eduardo Gago Munoz from Nick Price and Matt Knight, Lenny Woodcock and James Newbury completing our finishes. Let's go and hear from the guys in Victory Lane. So, Jack, finally a race victory here at Brands Hatch this weekend. You must be over the moon to finally get that top step because you've been on so many podiums already this weekend. Yeah, it's been a tough, uh, tough, tough uh, time to get that uh, first win. Um, the comp competition here is uh, really great, but uh, we've got a good start. Um, managed to keep uh, the lead for about six laps, I believe, and uh, had a good battle with Will and Connor. But the quick still car got him in the end, and yeah, we uh, had our first victory of the weekend. And yeah, uh, hopefully we can have a, a nice wet weather race for the uh, final. But I was going to say it started raining partway through that race, but it was very, very mild rain, wasn't it? It didn't really seem to affect the circuit grip at all. Did it just feel normal to you guys? Uh, the first lap, um, as we started, was a little bit um, slippery from the NASCAR, and I think the little bit of drizzle that we had between the races. Um, so the first lap was a bit uh, twitchy and a bit um, squeaky bum as we went round. But yeah, it was good. We had a good start, and yeah, we got a good finish. So, Will, another second place in that race. So, great points so far today, but just so close to taking that race win once again. Yeah, I, I managed to get the lead on the penultimate lap, but I just couldn't hold on to it. You know, Jack's so fast, it's, and he's such a good driver. It, it's hard to keep him behind, and, yeah, he put a move uh, up the inside through Graham Hill, and I, I just didn't have to grip on the outside. But, you know, second's good for the championship, so we'll take it. So, Tyler, third place overall in that race. A fantastic result for you here at Brands Hatch. You must be over the moon. Yeah, really glad with that one. Um, 
Well, for my first year in Legends and only my third meeting to have two podiums already, it's really good. It was a brilliant race with um, Jack, Connor and um, number 57 at the end. So, yeah, third place, I'm happy with that. So we're here with the number 28 driver, Paul Marcel. Paul, fantastic to meet you. First off, how's your weekend going? How's your season going in the Legends Cars Championship? Uh, so it's a question of playing catch up, basically. So I did, those who follow Legends a period of time know I did a few races here and there between 2000 and 2010. That is a full season in 2010. My goodness how it's moved on since then, I have discovered since coming back. Um, so the season so far has been just really just getting used to the different feel for the car. The tyres yeah. are different from when I was in. The standard of driving has gone way up. And um, yeah, so I'm playing a bit of catch up, but I'm having the time of my life. It's legends. Yeah. What, else, what else do you need? Now, I, I heard from the circuit commentator and a little birdie told me that you used to be a commentator like myself. Um, do you ever have an urge to still commentate on yourself while you're driving as well? Does it go through your mind? I do talk to myself, but um, I tell you what commentary does help with is you see things that others might not see. So if yes. there's a problem developing, you could normally see it. Now, the downside to that is that will cause me to back off a little because you can see it all going horribly wrong yeah. in front of you and you don't want to be caught up in the mess. So, no, I don't do the commentary to myself, but it does, it absolutely is a skill that's helped. And of course, we've got a great calendar this season, some wonderful yeah. circuits we're going to. Brands looks a bit tricky, especially in these conditions as well. Are there any circuits that you reckon are more difficult than this or is this one of your absolute favorites? This is one of my favourites in the dry. It is my least favourite in the wet because I cannot get round clearways, as, as may be seen uh, in some of these races. Um, my favourite circuit, we're not going to this year, unfortunately, but um, I'm very much looking forward to both Croc and no Croft and Knock Hill. I've raced at Croft and Knock Hill before and had top 10 finishes. I don't know whether the uh, whether it's going to allow me to, the, the current field is going to allow me to get those top 10 finishes, but we'll see how it pans out. Looking forward to it. James Newbury was due to start on the front. I think he's elected to start off the back, which could be a good decision from him. Matt Knight would have been alongside. Then Nick Price and Paul Marcel on row two. Eduardo Gago and Mike Schlupp on row three. Top point scorers so far jointly, Jack Parker and Will Gibson. And they're being chased by Connor Mills and Marcus Pett. Luke Simmons not too far behind in the points either. But it's Matt Knight that gets them underway. And a very, very wet bounce hatch Indy circuit. Andy Bird looking around the outside, finding some good grip is Bird. And up into second position and chasing Matthew Knight at the moment. Knight's done a bit of racing at Knock Hill in Scotland where we tend to get things very wet. It's very crowded going into. That's the, the manner of these reverse grid finals for Legends. And I'll talk more about the term final a little bit later on as we go in car with Nick Bridgman. He's in fourth place in the all growth car, about to be challenged by Tyler Reid. Tyler starting nearer the front by virtue of the non-finish in race two. So that really wiped out, sorry, race one, wasn't it, his non-finish? wiped out a potential decent score for Tyler Reed, so he gets the advantage of starting nearer the front here. He could be on for a win, if not a podium, as Andy Bird leads. Matt Knight rides the kerbs. Bird trying to build as much of a lead as possible before the higher scoring drivers work their way through. Connor Mills is there in 19. He's the leading driver of the top scorers, and it's the top scorer that wins the round, not the winner of this third race of the day. A lot of people call it the final. It's the final race. Uh, with a small F, and uh, it's the overall scorer on the day that wins the trophy. As Ollie Schlupp dives down the inside of Charlie Bud, I think that was. That was Andrew Rogerson, wasn't it? Get me white cars muddled up. There is Charlie Bud a little bit further back with Jack Parker looking around the outside. Big sideways moment for the quick steel car, and 
Parker will have to try and make that up. There is Charlie Budd on the outside of Ben Higgins. And you can see Jack Parker and Chris Needham right to the outside where a lot of drivers will tell you there is more grip. Basically because there's not as much rubber down there, it doesn't fill the holes up in the tarmac, so it means the, the water's got more chance to drain away on the outside. And that potentially where the line is. Look at Andy Bird controlling things well. Matt Knight perhaps not so well, but hangs on to second place. Well done, Matthew Knight to hang on to second place. Andrew Rogerson third having a good run. Tyler Reed on the outside of Mike Schlurp. His son, Ollie, in the case of car about to pop down the inside. We don't see too much of Ollie and Mike, father and son, together. Here's Connor Mills making progress through the field as well, and he's caught Mike Schlurp already. Going to the right outside. There's no grip on the grass, Connor. Connor, I remember having a wet race in Formula Ford back in the day at Donington and got on the podium against drivers with hugely greater budgets who went on up the ladder in single seaters. The wet a great leveller in single seater racing and take great joy in recounting that story um, when, when we see Connor, talented driver, and that goes to show how talented all the drivers are in Legends cars. Connor in the team hard machine, they're making progress and potentially on the thought winner of the day here, but we'll have to keep our eyes on Jack Parker, Will Gibson and uh, Marcus Pett as well, of course, and maybe Luke Simmons. Oh, and, a, and that's Chris Needham on the kerb, spins it around and, well, gets going again. Even champions like Chris Needham can have a moment. Here's the view from Will Gibson. Will will be counting his lucky stars there because sometimes you get luck, sometimes you don't. And maybe in previous years, Will might have collected Chris Needham's car, but he's OK and he gets to fight another lap. Connor Mills watching the dancing on ice in front almost isn't it with Ollie Schlup who goes to the outside run here challenging Andrew Rogerson look at that slice is through the inside Ollie Schlup what about that move up into second place where's the leader a flash of white in the distance tells us that Andy Bird is still there there he is white with the green number black top Andy Bird the leader mastering the conditions at the moment and getting away that is super legend strategy from Andy Bird getting away. oh and Rob Fountain has a that's not going to be the last of the spins that we see Rob Fountain 20 champion Matt Knight spins around Andrew Rogerson has a moment as well that's how tricky it is we've got champions spinning off they're all fighting each other they're fighting for position and this is going to be a very difficult race through to the conclusion here of day two at Brands So safety car out and Robin Fountain is out of the car as well, the 2000 champion. He's uh, races part-time in Legends these days, but great to have him back. Connor Mills looks on the inside of Ollie Schlup and that was a super move. And here's Will Gibson passing Ben Higgins. So progress being made right the way down the order. Safety car comes back in with everything cleared up and we are ready to race once again it's Andy Bird out front Bird's lead you've got to feel for Andy Bird he had a huge lead he built it himself and then it gets negated with the safety car as Connor Mills now takes the battle to him he's going to go around the outside that's going to mean Andy will be obviously respectful of Connor and will have to stick to the inside a little bit maybe not so much grip Connor goes through Ollie Schlup wobbling the back end goes through into second place so Andy Bird down to third but immediately Andy goes back to the outside he knows that's where the grip is he knows these conditions well and he's trying to get on toes. He's got further to go, though, so any speed advantage you might get potentially getting rubbed out depending on the conditions based on how much extra distance you have to go. But he's back into second place. Sonny Schluck gets a, a wheel on the curb as well in front of his teammates. And Jack Parker going through. Connor Mills there at the moment. I need to be a math, math magician to work out what the points are going to be. Um, at the minute, Schlupp over the grass, rejoins in front of Tyler Reed and Ben Higgins with Will Gibson there as well. I can't quite work out at the moment whether it's going to be Mills or Parker that will be top scorers. It's probably too early to start putting these equations in because I think Will Gibson might have a few more places in the offing as well. And he's teeing up the Casey Hill car. Here's Ollie Schlurp, goes on the outside he knows that perhaps there's a bit more grip and Will Gibson might have to be a bit more tentative down the inside uh, Tyler Reed looking to go on the inside but ultimately not doing so as Andy Bird goes through ahead of Jack Parker so Ben Higgins there Tyler Reed Ollie Schlupp on the outside Will Gibson keeping it really tight on the inside and just seeing if there's any speed or grip to be had there yet the answer is no there isn't he's still behind Tyler Reed Ollie Schlupp gets the move done Will Gibson 
We'll now chase Tyler Reid down and see where he can go. Championship leader Gibson, of course, coming into race three as well. And as we mentioned, joint top point scorer with Jack Parker, who could win the round here. There is Jack in the number four car. This our uh, second all-growth meeting of the season. We opened with two days racing at Cowboy Park. This is the second of our two days here at Brands Hatch with the American Speed Fest. Chris Needham's recovered from his moment earlier on. So too did Andrew Rogerson. They're chasing Nathan Anthony in the Savan. Always great racing through the field here. Andy Bird still in touch with Jack Parker. Here comes Ollie Schluck looking at the inside of Ben Higgins. What will Will Gibson's mindset be? I've often said Will might be thinking about the championship, but he will go for wins if he can. But this, this race here, if it was me out there, I'd be thinking, yeah, let's get the car home to the finish. That's going to be absolutely key because 150 points is better than five points that you get for a non-finish. You get five points for starting, irrespective of where you finish, as long as you don't get disqualified. Not that we have too many of those, I hasten to add. As Chris Needham starts to put pressure on Nathan Anthony along Cooper Strait. Is Chris going to make the move? No, he isn't. Remember, more grip potentially on the outside, so he might have a run at Clearways and Clark Curve. That's some great racing here today. Shame that the conditions have deteriorated for our third and final race, but again, the cars are putting on a good show. Look how they're using the outside. We've got Marcus Pett there as well. Marcus, a little bit of drift of the other top point scorers for races one and two, I have to say, here in the final. But he would have been pleased to have come into today as championship leader as here comes Nathan Anthony making the run in the Savan down the inside of Nick Bridgman in the 68 car wonderful race between these two Bridgman of course a previous race winner in the championship Chris Needham is down behind them and Bridgman holding on the outside Nathan Anthony gives a little waggle of the tail as they go 3-1 up into Druids meanwhile exiting Druids it's Connor Mills Mills leading, Jack Parker in second, Andy Bird still holding his own and racing well in the wet. So Ollie Schlipp down behind him. Then Ben Higgins and Will Gibson. So it's Parker and Mills again. Wide moment for Bird on the grass. Ollie Schlipp as, as a result goes wide. That won't hurt Ollie Schlipp at all, actually, because remember he's looking for grip out there. Everybody looking for grip everywhere. Gibson flicks back to the inside, a little bit of opposite lock. Does that scrub speed off? Certainly a better run out of the corner to Ben Higgins in the 20 car so across the line we go again now here comes Jack Parker looking for the lead what a battle between these two Jack Parker on the inside on the slippery slide this is a, a mega corner to make that sort of move brave stuff from these boys clean and fair racing Mills though is going to get him back on the cut back up towards Druids Mills in 19 he's due a race win Jack Parker will say otherwise for sure Parker going for the wide run and the grip perhaps and that long way round is that going to pay for him Connor's going to chop across and Jack Parker's got the inside down into Graham Hill Ben they're still side by side and Connor Mills is out gets a little bit crossed up loses but you saw how, how much momentum he lost just by a little bit of opposite lock there but again he gathers it up he'll chase Jack Parker into Surtees now into McLaren the next corner is Clearways normally you could think about having a dive up the inside but perhaps not the move to come off here they go back to the outside they go for a little bit more grip a little bit more momentum perhaps here as they come off Clark Curve onto the Brabham straight again and it's Jack Parker who could be looking good for another race win here crosses the stripe once again Ollie Schlup is back in third place Andy Bird is fourth Will Gibson challenging Ben Higgins for fifth place at the moment Jack Parker is the man in the box seat to take the round victory on points Connor Mills busy challenging him up under the bridge they go again these two amazing how they've managed to build the lead and Jack Parker remember as joint top point scorer on the round has come right the way through from the back Andy Bird goes wide and he's having a much better race great to see that fortune beginning to turn for him the Legends cars move away from the all growth series we'll, we'll next see them in the Elite Cup at Croft slightly different field there's Luke Simmons chasing Matthew Knight in trouble too. Luke will be delighted with that maiden win. We all were, switched teams this year. And to get a maiden win in his second year, very early on in the season as well, super achievement for them. Right, his dad Paul off on safari this year, so we we'll, won't be around at some of the rounds. We've got um, Mike and Lee Bourne and Dave Ward helping to run that car, which will be great. There's plenty of legends experience there and encouragement available for him. Onto the last lap though. And Jack Parker looking set to wrap up the round here with victory in race three. Andy Bird 
down behind Will Gibson. So Gibson has made good progress. Quick look at where we are with Nick Bridgman. Nick's just outside the top 10 at the moment. Marcus Pett challenging Andrew Rogerson and Nick just behind them in the all-growth car. Ahead of them, the Savannah of Nathan Anthony heading for a top 10. But here's the battle for the lead. James Newbury, who could have started on the front, sits in the middle of the track. They go either side of him. James had no other option there. Connor Mills goes wide, gets it sideways. Jack Parker back into the lead and Connors move for the lead doesn't pay off but now he switches to the inside in the wet here this is a last lap move from him Jack Parker goes wide and comes back in and Connor Mills move on the inside paid off you can see him fighting the car sliding it through McLaren up towards clearways Ollie Schlupp has closed in on them Schlupp is closing in can he take the win from third place as they run off Clark Curve onto the Bradham straight down towards the start finish line Connor Mills looks like he's run away with this one though through the final two corners Connor Mills is going to take the chequered flag and I think the day is going to go to Jack Parker with second place Ollie Schlupp a fine third and Andy Bird gets the better of Will Gibson for fourth place Gibson fifth Ben Higgins wrapping up our top six and concluding a splendid day's racing here at Brands conditions could have been better in race three but the guys have given us some superb action and Connor Mills back on the top step of the podium that is great news we've had some real noteworthy results today including Luke Simmons' first win and Connor Mills getting back on the top step of the podium as well. Mills wins from Parker, Schlupp, O, Andy Bird, Will Gibson, Ben Higgins in six from Tyler Reid, and then Charlie Budd, Chris Needham and Nathan Anthony wrapping up the top 10. 11th, Marcus Pett from Andrew Rogerson and Nick Bridgman. Mike Schlupp, 14th from Luke Simmons with Matt Knight next, then Simon Griffiths from Mark Beattie, Paul Mazel and Eduardo Gago Munoz from Nick Price, Lenny Woodcock and James Newbury. Rob Fountain, the only non-finisher in those very, very tricky conditions. So, Connor, a fantastic end to your weekend. I know you've had a bit of an up and down weekend in terms of how you felt the car was performing, but that is one hell of a great way to finish it off. Talk us through it. Yeah, exactly like I said yesterday, I was hoping for rain today. Um, and then finally, uh, I thought you know it spitted a bit earlier, and then I thought, oh, that'd be it. But luckily, our prayers were answered, and uh, yeah, we brought the team hard car home in first place. And it was another fantastic battle at the front of the field. So much position swapping, so many cutbacks as well. But in the wet, it's even more open to that, isn't it? Because you want to take those wider lines sometimes around the corners instead of sitting on the apex, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Like it wasn't as slippy as it was yesterday when it rained a bit. Like it was really odd. Like it was actually it's probably the grippiest in the wet I've driven brands. So you could there was a lot more usually there's just one line around it um, but then there was you know some corners there was two three lines so you know especially at the end with Jack we were we were rubbing wheels and different lines and you know side by side it was good good race um, and sometimes it's a bit better like that rather than just being single file so Jack a very dramatic final race of the weekend but still you managed to hold your nerve enjoy the wet weather as you said and a great result for the team and yourself of course yeah it's a fantastic result for the team we had two cars in the top three look at most but we're over the moon for that yeah, no, good race, kept my nerve, tricky conditions out there, with lots of fast drivers, but the quick steel car, it did its job, held its own, it was just a shame that we couldn't just pick that first place, but another podium, uh, five podiums out of six races, that's a great weekend to me. So Oli Schlupp, third place here at Brands Hatch, that was a very busy final race, I was stood at Paddock Hill Ben watching and saw you sideways many a time, talk us through that race from your perspective. Yeah, well, started quite far back in the pack and had some work to do on the first couple laps, but yeah, once we had some clean air it was just trying to keep it in a straight line basically. <laughs> Our fourth day's racing courtesy of All Growth is won by Jack Parker with 555 points. Will Gibson second from Connor Mills, then Ben Higgins and Ollie Schlupp, the man we just heard from. Marcus Pett in six from Luke Simmons and Nathan Anthony. Tyler Reid and Chris Needham wrapping up our top ten. Championship-wise, Will Gibson back into the lead from Marcus Pett. Chris Needham still third, but Ollie Schlupp now fourth ahead of Andy Bird and Luke Simmons. The Mickle Parker team car leads the team championship and is into the top ten. And that's us finished here for the day at Brands Hatch in the Legends Cars Championship. Unfortunately, conditions have deteriorated towards the end of the day, but we've still had a fantastic time here at American Speedfest, and we hope you've enjoyed the coverage as well. It's been fantastic racing as ever, showing us who's quick in the wet as opposed to the dry, and we look forward to seeing you again at Snetterton in a couple of weeks' time.